Welcome, Gearheads. Welcome, Gearheads. Recorded on August 1st, 2022. Oh, I forgot to do this. Ford. GM makes threats. Uh, BMW. Be it, and the next generation Dodge. That, and much more. Play on my tag drive on lug nuts. Right on over here to facebook.com backslash lug nuts podcast. That's where you're going to find our finely tuned and polished product, like our names popping up right here and right there. We are the ever polished show that always hops over to this first story. Uh, this first story, Ford. Have you been waiting on a Ford? Yes. I'll say yes, you have. And uh, Ford has been taking a lot longer than expected. And I think mm. it says a lot about what's been happening to the car industry as a whole. <sighs> yeah. So let's mm. scroll down. First one we've heard about a lot is the global semiconductor shortage. Yes. They got no chips. So no chips. companies that uh, we had uh, companies rolling back. Yeah. Uh, stuff <clears throat> rolling back the uh, uh, upgrades that some people course sort of liked. Yeah, so, man. I, n- n- you know, and like heated seats weren't available in some and now, well, now I, I, I see that story we reported on last week of, you know, Different, even, you know, it was somebody other than BMW. What was it, Chevy or somebody? Or not Chevy, but a Cadillac? Yeah. Charging for uh, heated seats. No, no, that's BMW. (laughs) But that's later. Oh. Uh, Scroll down. Another one is COVID-19 around the world has sort of caused supply chain issues. 91 suppliers could not get their goods a good, pe- good bit of people made a sick day. Yeah, and I had to wait for one of my clients like, for five months for a chair. Yeah. Sitting in a, when all those chips were sitting in port. Yeah. Sitting off sea waiting because no one would unload. Uh, chips, people, elephants, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, on those ships were car parts. The third issue leads to this, which is the uh, also the uh, scroll down. There logistical you. issues. Ford has a lot of logistical issues that relate to that last part. Cause so Ford delivers all their trucks on trucks. Now these trucks are not brand new. Occasionally they break down and you they need say. parts found on road dead. Yeah. And, um, there's, there's no parts for the truck. They can't get the parts to fix the truck. And they're, they're short on drivers, so they have problems all over the supply chain. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they do. And their share price. Ooh, you're do starting they? to worry me, Ford. They're talking about your share price a bit <laughs> too much. <laughs> me thinks Going into the Ryvan speak- area there, you know what I'm saying? Me thinks you speak it too much. Like, you know, when I search news, I should yeah. see, like, cars, not like... Hey, let's talk about that share price. Yeah. Kind of worries me when I see that when you're searching for what's the car going to do. Yeah, well, you ain't got no cars. What else are you going to talk about? Well, you you could talk about this next story. I have to say, this is about to be a a stock and share podcast real quick. Ah, GM. uh, This is their second go round for threatening to clean up the greedy dealers that would make Adam Smith cry. Someone got that. So uh, last time for uh, dealers are gouging. Mm. It's still a problem. They tried to fix this with the first go around of restrictions and stuff. But dealers, they didn't, they don't get the message. So what they were doing is they were using a broker to sell the car and mark it up and uh, taking the prop profit. That's a loophole. (laughs) <laughs> not anymore to solve the problem. Warranties will not be transferable. 
Yeah, no, it, it's so, to the owner, not yeah. to that guy that you b- the bought broker, off of. Where, yeah, so yeah. that's how they're going to stop that. They really are trying hard to protect the consumer as much as they can here. Well, as they should. I mean, everybody's trying to struggle and survive when you're looking at the times we're at to where there's no parts. You, it, If you're making a mm-hmm. car, it's a whole lot more expensive because there's a lot more expense in it. Yeah. And that's what people are just like, no, look at this sticker. That's almost to where the manufacturer isn't really taken into account. Like, yeah, at a, a pre-COVID level, that may be the sticker price. Yeah. Not now. Yep. Not now. There's a lot of things and there's a lot of struggle in this world, just like this next company. Mm. Alfa Romeo. They've always struggled here in the U.S., but they'd like to turn a corner and design the correct SUV, crossover, or sedan that Americans would love. Huh. Yes, yes, yes. The article suggests that they won't be a competitor to BMW, so probably they'll use it as the uh, uh, premium version of Dodge. Because okay. it's all sort of Stellantis. Yeah, I mean, Dodge could use that kind of... European flair of uh, well, that flair brand. would look just like this. What wrong screen? Uh, being Stellantis, we talked about something like this last week. This one will mm. be the this Alpha is actually going to be a four hundred eight Peugeot. Nice. So there, if you like the body style, I guess better. I don't mind it. I mean, mm. we've seen uglier cars on this program. So, you know, some of these crossovers look better on when you take a picture of them than they do in person. Because in person, they still kind of look. Yeah, but I really like this blue. The, the color's not bad. The color's nice. The rims are weird, but, you know, I find it quirky. Well, uh, Alpha says they want to become a big volume company and focus on sporty vehicles. Mm. Oh, oh, oh. It's a nice idea. Yeah, it's almost a dream. Yeah, as we can dream about this next story. Here, Toyota, Suzuki, and Daihatsu are teaming up. Toyota often teams up. Uh, they teamed up on their new electric SUV with BMW. That... Uh, that team up also gave you the Toyota Supra and the Z4. So they like to spread it around and get stuff from all over. And this time they're going to go with these guys. Toyota will lend the GAB platform. They're going to make a, uh, a sports car. Nice. It looks very sports car. Uh, they're going to use the GAB. B platform used on the RS. Suzuki will donate a turbocharged three liter, one s- three cylinder, one liter engine. So mm. they have that. A gas engine, 100 horsepower. They could probably tune it to about 150 or so. This comes with a six speed torque converter automatic. So nice. they're going to take that, uh, put it in the chamber, and uh, make something, hopefully, that looks like this. Very nice. Looks kind of like a, uh, a, it'll be a great sports car. It looks like it would be worth a lot of money. It looks like if you put that craftsmanship into it, and, you know, being hopefully, who they yeah, are, with Toyota, the, it's going to last long. Hopefully, it'll be like a mass production, kind of like a, a MR2. Yeah. That would be fantastic. Absolutely. Just like this next story. Ah, BMW. You remember? So let's go in the Wayback Machine. Remember last week when BMW said, you cannot turn on the heated seat without us. Yeah, yeah. You cannot. Well, there was an update. And it turns out the paywall, you can just go around it. You just pay (laughs) a guy 50 bucks and you just go around it. So... Uh, Also, the paywall, uh, the adaptive suspension, unique exhaust sounds, and those famous heated seats are all behind a paywall. 
90% of vehicles sold in the U.S. have heated seats. So you can go around that and just buy somebody else's car. BMW says, we're offering financial flexibility to those not willing to pay up front for those features. He I'll probably didn't front. say it like that. No, but I'll probably just pay up front. Uh, if you're well, buying a people, BMW, you know what you're getting into. You're buying a BMW. This is for people who are like, you know what? Maybe I'll be, buy a BMW. Well, uh, UK owners, people in UK, New Zealand, Germany, and South Africa have had enough. Huh. So here's how you go around it. You find a specialized company, you slip them a 50, and you have all those things I'm active for you. It. I'm not going to touch it. Oh, you'll be touching it all. This heated seat I'm a touch subscription it. isn't really going to work. No, it's not. Stop it. And that's going to happen here as well, I imagine. Yeah, man. Except the Americans are the protesting type. I think they're going to do it a little bit more subtly. They're <laughs> not going to do like heated seats. They're going to do... Like no, they the, I think they'll do the same exact thing. It's not working there. Well, so they, the, they, hopefully they'll cancel it and just don't put it on been. the car. Like, Well, they kind of have been with like, ac like the first instance, AccuraLink, the OnStar. The, the instant links that give you GPS na uh, navigation, accurate traffic information, and all that other kind of like hoopla they put in that bundle, they already started that, but it's just for the luxury features. They're, saying, they're being a little bit greedy, saying, you know what? These features we actually already gave you? You know what? No, I'm going to Indian give that. I, I think for that. I think they just only want us to have one seat, and it's a heated seat. And you're going to pay for it. Or you're going to pay for it. So, I... Uh, when did I, this turn into George Orwell's 1984? I don't know. When you started charging me for something that I bought. A subscription <laughs> for. No, I'm not paying a subscription to sit in my chair that I purchased. No. Oh, do you want I'll to... stick with the wooden one, thank you. Do you want that to pay for have... the subscription for your remote to turn on and off your TV? The only way to do it? Like, all right, we shouldn't be giving those ideas out there because no, don't don't wish it into existence, please. Let's wish into existence another. <sighs> but hats off to them. Yeah, I guess because I don't want to wear that hat. Yeah, that was <sighs> that was totally scary, disappointing. There. Unlike this story, no, this this story is a big disappointment too. Oh. Bentley, uh, they're trying to make an electric vehicle, but they got to push it back to twenty twenty six. Well. So. A pushback, pushback, way back. Maybe good for it. This if one they have the has right a bit more to it than that. The VW Group, Audi, Bentley, Porsche, all had software problems. So a lot of that going around. It stopped everything for them. You know what? It's almost like if you've just taken your pro, uh, your software engineers out of a place for a year, year plus, and then you just uh, no, went no. Off. This is this is something else. I think. Oh, Bentley okay. said, oddly enough, I found this interesting. Bentley said the average battery weighs less than their 12 cylinder engine. I mean, yeah, a course. lot of things weigh less than a 12 cylinder engine. Sounds like you remember how Letterman would have those bits. Will it float? Yeah, we, we should have a big scale. Does yeah, it no. weigh less than a Bentley 12 cylinder engine? We put stuff on the scale. Of That's course, you can, your first thought is Letterman. <laughs> Mine is like, is that 600 pound woman going to fit in this boat <laughs> successfully? Like, what? What? Anything no, I'm thinking, is, you know, that that's anything's least, heavier uh, than that engine or lighter than that engine, rather. Lots of things are. If you're heavier than that engine, whew, you know, you have a problem. Those things are like. Six ton vehicles. When you're in a Bentley reason. that has a V12, check the weight before you drive over a bridge. It says it on the door jam. Yeah, they legally just, have to. Just look at that weight. Just give it. Give a look. Okay, look, I can't look. go over. Like, it's, look at look at it's all those eight digits. tons. Okay, I I gotta like watch bridges. I can't go that road. Six ton bridge. You can't go that way. Yeah, you have to back up. You have to get out. Explain to the people. It's like look. driving. I am too heavy for this bridge, and it might break. It's so got to be like to driving a tiny so move. triaxle everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what it's like. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
The Volkswagen Beetle <laughs> weighed a thousand pounds. The heavy Beetle, one the heavy thousand Bentley the pounds. Coat. I'm fairly certain. <laughs> yeah, but no. in my uh, strengths class, the uh, one teacher would always use Volkswagens because they were a thousand pounds. All right, that's a good unit of measurement. We're stacking I guess. Volkswagens on here. He drove I mean, one. He collected them. He loved them. And when Volkswagen nerds aside, I can't I remember mean, his name. There were many, many math teachers. I imagine when you get to a master's degree level, that that's kind of like, you know, math is a big thing. Hey, speaking of math, this next story, J.D. Power has announced the best compact SUV, and here it is, the 2022 Buick Envision. It is the best compact SUV by J.D. Power. Okay. I like this. J.D. Power says, head-terming elegance and dynamic performance. Owners like how quiet it is in the cabin. I bet. With the engine. Yeah. Uh, some of the features are uh, hands-free, trunk opening and closing, uh, sensors come standard, built-in Wi-Fi hotspot with seven devices, smartphone control, airbags. I like how they put airbags like we haven't expected that for the last 40 years. Hey, by the way, we got airbags. Yeah, yeah, I've been expecting airbags in a car for 30 years now. You should. You, wait, Stop bragging. Wait, which one didn't you put it in? Never this, mind. This one I do like. Uh, HD rear cameras. It's not just a camera. It's an HD camera. That's a very good point. And that's point. standard. That's a very good point because most people are like, I oh, don't know, the f camera's kind of grainy. And the mm -hmm. explanation that I have always heard from multiple different manufacturers, it's just to make sure you don't run over Timmy. It's not for your yeah. family videos. It's not. Yeah, it's the HD not. camera. Yes, you are looking at high definition video. You shouldn't be looking at it and go, that guy's got a scratch on his one. <laughs> you see the scratch? Look, look here in this eight inch screen. I can see the scratch. Yeah, in the eight like, inch screen, you're gonna. Hey, man, you you, you should just really need to buff know if there's thing. a wall there, right? You know, is there a body or isn't there? That's well, the point. This one has a turbocharged two liter inline four, making 228 horsepower and 258 torques. 21, 22, 31 MPG. Starts at 31.8, climbs all the way up to 42.2. Mm. The slowest selling SUV, oddly enough, by JD Power, this is a cut story, is the Lincoln Nautilus. Nobody <laughs> wants them. <laughs> Nobody wants them. Slowest selling thing. It'll sit there. And remember, if your car sits there, remember to rotate the tires. Just yeah. Bit. Well, also to move it because you can develop flat spots on the tires. And yeah. also yeah. Uh, pitting in the brake uh, brakes where the brake pads are sitting. It'll just kind of, huh, no way. S just stay there and make an imprint in the metal on you your can, rotors. You can see it in an extreme example, like when they go to, uh, in all the car shows, and they go to, like, uh, junkyards. Yeah. Those cars have been sitting for a while. A long time. Yeah. Long time. So. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, the Lincoln Nautilus story I cut, there was a lot of news this week. Good stuff. You, ah, Dodge. To avoid. Not, you don't want to avoid this one. I love the look of this car. It wasn't a Dodge. No, they do have some good looks. As much as I joke, their cars about are good. But I've only are. ever heard a lot of upselling horror stories about the dealers. So. Well, you know, uh, this the next generation Dodge will be all electric. Current models have a V6 or a V8 strapped to an eight-speed trans. They're all going that way, aren't they? Yeah, you want to get one of these while they're uh, around. I mean, I talk about it like they're going to disappear. Go on, all of them. But it happens like you know, yeah, but I just see a couple electric. years, they will disappear. I just see electric as the, it's just the easy option. We yeah. can do, just strap a couple batteries in it and you're fine. Go to work. Yeah, the batteries. Yeah. We've been talking about hydrogen and everybody. The, ev well, you know, the that thing, explodes. Here's the thing. So we're does all, gas. Just, we're not going to have hydrogen because where are you going to get your hydrogen? There's no hydrogen. St I don't know of any. Well, even Westchester, I don't know of any there. Yeah, no, there's no hydrogen. Like, stores. if there's going to be a hydrogen station, look in Westchester. 
That's where they keep the rich it's people. Where they, yeah, they put yeah. it right by the rich people. Main line. Is Only, it in the main line? Yeah, no, rich, I don't know of any there. Main so line? Those pr- are the places where if you're going to see, like, that's where you're seeing Teslas and all those other kinds yeah, of Yeah, because those are the areas that have more money, and they would acquire the new technology first. It's and they just, want, they demand those features for I their technology. I just know how that's they how get those batteries, though. As a class on basic sociological construction of whatever i'm just saying but those batteries though yeah we're not gonna look at where we get them like those nikes on every on you know everything feet? has its we're just down gonna, everything has its downside but you know i'm just gonna put the wallpaper over that right over there and just gloss <laughs> over that to the next story huh i really <laughs> picked this story just because i like looking at the car it's oh really, it's great it is great looking car that's even, why even in that purple yeah. color Oh yeah, I mean it's it's a dirty kind of purple though. <laughs> it's not the purple you would want like Third Street Saints, but it's I like a nice, yeah. They have fantastic colors. I feel like that's a color purple to where you don't know if it's dirty. Yeah, just like in the right season, in, in wintertime w- you're still fucked, but summertime you're good. Right, just like this next story. Oh, good lord! Oh, the Italians. So this is the Fiat <sighs> Five Hundred. Yeah. In the UK, it has been named City Car of the Year by Auto Express Magazine. And not just one year in a row, two years in a row. Oh, heavens. Level two autonomous driving up to 200 mile or 199 mile range, not 200. Mm. So I would imagine it gets slightly less than that. And then. Yeah, but it's a Fiat. So, like, what do you really expect range-wise out of any uh, Fiat? Eighty percent charge in thirty-five minutes on an eighty-five kilowatt fast charge. All right. So, I mean, it's the other option. I don't. We don't I don't talk about Fiat a lot. I don't. I mean, look. When you look at a, good, a decent, fast I can't charge, wait to see what their service record is for like electric cars. Yeah, because like Fiats are known for braking. Yeah, but when the you F at, stands for fix. But if you look at the different technology, even in uh, electric, to try to go solid mm-hmm. state batteries. Yeah. If you could get something like a solid state battery in a Fiat, what could they possibly fuck up? The solid state battery would just randomly die at random points. <laughs> Like all of them would weird die. Weird electrical at the problems. Same point. Yeah, you're right. The weird electrical problems is what you're going to experience in these things. And let's hope you Fiat, don't look, label it like the Germans. Fiat, I tried. Okay, I'm I sorry. tried to give you hope, but logic just dictated otherwise. Uh, it was one person from Italy explained to me. He said, "Here's the problem with Italian cars. Naps. Every day at lunch, every mm-hmm. worker goes to work with a big bottle of wine." That's not a good idea. And at lunch, they drink the bottle of wine, and then they go back to work. We don't do that here. Well, you're not supposed to do that here. I don't see the problem. You're you're making cars. I'd like you (laughs) clear-headed. All right. Now, I'm not making cars, so that's a good point. You got to be clear-headed. To steal Mm. a car, just like the most stolen car in this next story. Turns out Kia and Hyundai are being stolen at an alarming rate in Columbus, Ohio. They account for 38% of the thefts so far this year. Mm. Ask me why. Why? Well, that's because it can easily be hacked with a screwdriver and a USB cord. I'm sorry. Did you MacGyver a screwdriver and a USB cord? No, no, they tell you how to steal it here in the Fox article. That's probably why they think it's wrong. Well, they don't, like, walk you through it, but they say it's because it doesn't have an immobilizer. Ah, Lotus. Their first SUV rolled off the line in China, the Type 135 electric vehicle. I like those lights. They have a brand-new $1.2 billion facility in Wuhan, China. Woo! Something else came from Wuhan lately. I can't put my finger on it. It probably wasn't important. I don't know. It was 
probably just happiness. First SUV ever from Lotus, dual motor setup that gives you 159 horsepower, 100 kilowatt battery, 370 miles of range. There are rumors of a 900 horsepower version. They would love to sell 100,000 vehicles by 2020 something. Would they? Yeah. Oh, man. Who wouldn't? I think it's 2025, 2026. Okay. Uh, I, the copy doesn't have the last number. So it go it's, to. It's enter the number here. Oh, we have another one Toyota. <sighs> Would you believe it's been 10 years since the uh, GR86 and the BRZ came out? Hang on. What? Say that again. It has been 10 years since the GR86 and the BRZ so came out. So they're going to have a celebration. The 10th anniversary JDM spec. Uh, limited edition. 10? This, 10 this years? This color is called... Flame orange as a nod to the original listed below. They've had a few cosmetic ups, upgrades in and out. They got the same naturally aspirated 2.4 cylinder engine producing 232 horsepower and 184 torques. Get them while they last. It's that always is, if it, you can get them. It's always been a very sexy car. It's fantastic. They brought you know, out, generally, if you see one, you know there's a car guy. There he well, goes. The car guys always latched on to the AE86, and especially anime car guys, they latched on to that because of Initial D. And Toyota, has, that with that car, it was so special. And they it looked fantastic. This. And, then, and 10 years into it, mm -hmm. they kept supporting this car, this idea of a rear-wheel drive powerhouse or as some say 10 years of subaru fucking up toyota <laughs> wow I that mean, is what look, some people think but mental and know. physical abuse aside i think we have a sexy car in front of us it is it's fantastic us. you know it's a it's one of those cars that's just a pleasure to see it is They're great to look at you know pleasant to the eyes i'd love to see that guy from gotham garage like, oh, do his what his yeah. thing to one of these That'd be the lug nuts. Just put button. his magic on the That'd thing. That'd be the lug like, nuts mobile, man. Go for it. What? Head. I don't know. Do your thing. Just Gotham Garage. You're in the Peterson. Just do whatever just, it is just you do. Gotham Garage that. That's what I want. Now let's see what the mystery story is. And the surprise story of the night. Which one didn't I like? The L I didn't read it, but uh, this is the LFA. They're going to get an endurance racer. Ooh. LFA 2 will go to Le Mans. That's the endurance race. Oh, it looks fantastic. Like Let's flip it. through a few of those pictures. Ooh, I love that front end. It looks fantastic. Oh, that's oh, a sexy oh, front oh. end right there, man. I love and that. I think uh, if it has to be in Le Mans, I think they have to sell a few. I'm not Ooh. sure of the rules. That or is that, uh, I think that's motor sport, motocross. I'm that's thinking. very like Blade Runner, like kind of like very futuristic kind of angles on the back end with lighting. And oh, it's fantastic. It's so great. They do really know what they're doing oh. when they design cars like this. I want you know. that. Although, I don't want to pay for it. When you I see a sedan, it. they all sort of match that, and nobody in a Lexus ever drives the way they look. Oh, Lexuses that's... look like they want to be driven on the Autobahn flat out. But Just generally... Like here I've see. never really gotten behind many Lexus drivers. Here drive we like see that. the LFA in its natural state on the road driving. It is very happy. You know what I mean? You could almost do an automotive like <laughs> documentary. Um, yeah, that was an episode of uh, Top Gear when uh, Jezzer, uh, Clarkson, or Clarkson, May, and Hammond were there. Ah, so great minds of ours. So you have, it is because you've seen it. Oh, there you go. So, so hopefully you'll see it in an endurance race near you. Now that's a better look at the back end, Giggity. Um, it's a nice back end. I really like that. It's very swoopy, but it has nice angles to nice angles to the car. To where that kind of you get that Porsche. Fantastic, almost, sleek front looking front all over. Yeah. yeah. 
Hundred percent good. That was a great surprise story. It is just it's a like, fantastic way. It's almost a feel good thing, right in your heart, like us. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us. Go over to uh, Facebook dot com slash lug nuts what is it lug nuts podcast facebook.com backslash lug nuts podcast well you're you will find the recorded version the polished version that is lug nuts because it does not matter if you drive a citron or a ford nothing rolls without lug nuts we'll see you next week gang drive on it really doesn't matter if you drive a Dodge or a Peugeot or a Alpha. They're, they're all the same car. All, <laughs> I, I make same. fun, but they really have done it yeah. forever. They're Change the body and the badges. They're all garbage. That's well, the you know, whatever. They're great or not. Or, if all garb- If all cars weren't garbage, I wouldn't have anything to fix. Okay. Well, at some point, every part breaks. Not to be too bleak or morbid about it, but, I mean, it's just the way it happens. Now that you've depressed all our listeners. Until next week, gang, drive on! Drive on lug nuts. That was a hell of a F1 race. <laughs> it was. Oh. It's one of those things, man. You get that... Louis in second, Russell right behind him. I, I, but like you said during the race, I would have almost really liked seeing <laughs> Russell at P one. Yeah, yeah, that would have been that would have been uh, good. I mean, obviously for us, for anybody but Verstappen, but he did do a good race, man. From you know, back of could, the line. Yeah, if he could just be a bit nicer. Okay, I I don't know. All right. I mean, it was a great race, though. He's, he's a fine race car driver, as we can tell. But, I liked you know. how, in the beginning, you had just, like, Williams, like, pfft, being Williams. Their shit just falling off the car. But yeah. then at the end, the it was beginning. like, at the end, it was, like, everybody spinning out and having problems with the light mm-hmm. rain. Light yeah. rain is a bitch, especially for racing when you need grip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just uh, got a smidgen of it at the end there. Just a little bit moist. Yeah. A little bit. Just like. A little bit of hitting that subscribe button. Right above my head is going to be the very best Purge Hangers and Wall Hangers video for you. Right above Big Brother's head. Well, that's going to be, I think I'm right this time, all 117 or slash 18-ish Lug Nuts podcast in a playlist. And, of course, our podcast does not end until we hear our main man, Connor, say, Drive on, love We'll see you next week, gang. Bye-bye.